The Bad Update exploit offers the first fully software-enabled hack for the Xbox 360. So what is it? How does it work? And is it right for you? Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Since the Xbox 360 was launched in 2005, people have been looking for a way to hack it that doesn't involve opening up the console, soldering components and attaching NAND memory programmers. So in 2025, this year, um, somebody called Grim Doomer um, finally managed to do this with their bad update exploit. Now this is a software only hypervisor exploit that allows you to run homebrew code directly on any model of the Xbox 360. So what does all of this mean and how does it work? Well, let's find out. So we're referring to this as a hypervisor exploit. So a, a hypervisor is, is simply a piece of software that manages access to the computer system's resources to make sure that only code that's authorised to run and interact with the computer is allowed to do so. So it, it's not an actual part of the computer operating system, but in effect runs in its own lower level code layer to manage the operating system and provide some base level security. Now, not all computers use a hypervisor layer, and it really comes into its own when there are multiple operating systems trying to share those computer resources, such as memory, disks, I.O., and so on. So usually this situation arises when you're running multiple virtual computers on a single physical computer system. So, so, so the hypervisor is there to make sure that one virtual machine can't affect any other, either simply to hog resources or, in, as in the Xbox hypervisor case, to inject unauthorised code into the system. Now, if you've ever installed a virtual machine on your Windows or Linux or Mac computer, you'll probably have heard the terms sort of Hyper-V, KVM and so on. Now, these are hypervisors that are installed and or used by the virtual machine management system. So, so by default, if you have a Windows PC, it doesn't actually load a hypervisor layer, but instead just boots directly into the oper operating system. Now, on the Xbox 360, this hypervisor layer is actually built into the actual hardware of the machine. It runs as the machine boots, and from then on controls all access to system resources. So because this boot process is fixed into the Xbox firmware, by the time the console boots up and is able to run application software, the hypervisor then is already running and in full control. And this is why it's been so hard to get a software exploit working on the Xbox 360. Now, if we look at sort of the normal hardware exploits, so, so these ones such as RGH3, that they get around the hypervisor's control by trying to bypass it during the boot sequence or, or to manipulate it so that you can change the way in which it works. Now, the RGH3 or, or the reset glitch hack uses some minute timing vulnerabilities in the console's boot sequence where it runs checks to make sure the code is fully authorised to run. So in this one, you actually solder a wire onto the motherboard. And what that does is it actually sends a signal from the Southbridge chip to the main processor. And this triggers a reset pulse that glitches the processor at just the precise point in the boot process so that it skips some of its security checks that then allows your code in your modded NAND firmware to run and effectively lock the hypervisor out. So without this hardware enabled glitch that there was no way to break into that boot sequence to get past the hypervisor. So so hopefully now you can see the issue that's prevented people from developing a software only exploit. So, so how do you stop the very secure hypervisor from running after it has already run? So um, the, the bad update exploit then, um, to get a full explanation of that, and then please do have a look at Grim Doomer's own explanation, which you'll find on this GitHub repository um, here. And again, I'll put links to this down in the description. Now, the actual explanation of what the vulnerability is, how it works, 
and how they wrote the code to take advantage of it, it is fully explained in these two link pages here. So, so please do have a look through those to get a full overview of how it was all put together. Now, now, now to be honest, I have to admit that this level of coding is way beyond me, and I really do have the utmost respect for Grim Doomer. Um, so, so here is my very superficial level attempt to explain what's happening. So the Xbox hypervisor is a very well written piece of very secure code. Um, it was heavily updated from the original Xbox because that um, was fairly easy to break into. So it does lock down pretty much every software process and interaction requiring everything to be fully encrypted and authorised. But there are a few system calls where it does allow small pieces of signed code to be run. Now, now game code can use these system calls to run various updates to the console, and, and I think that's where the bad update um, gets its name from. Now, after analysing a whole range of game update payloads, um, Grim Doomer did notice that there was a scenario where the hypervisor could allow custom code to run, but that, that custom code needed to be run from encrypted memory. So working out how to inject the required data and code into that encrypted memory seems to be the main focus uh, and the main sort of problem in actually developing this exploit. Now, now from what I can gather, the, the hypervisor uses a 10-bit whitening value to encrypt the data, I, I guess almost like a key. So, so this gives us uh, 1024 possible key values. So, so by breaking into the update code at the correct point, you can then use brute force where we just check every single possible combination of key to find one that actually works so that we can then correctly encrypt our exploit code package so that it will be accepted by the hypervisor and then run. So, so at this point then, you have a small block of code that can then cause your full exploit code to be run. Now, now, if you do look through the explanations on those pages I've just pointed out, you, you will, as I say, get the full picture. Uh, and there are, of course, a, a quite a few more steps to getting control of the console, and it does involve some very deep and very low-level coding. Um, but, 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 I'm, but, I'm, but I'm not sure that I could actually properly explain what those steps are, so I'm just going to leave it here that there is some code magic going on that makes us all work. So, so basically then, um, w when you run the exploit code as part of a game um, that, that does exhibit this hackable update process, then it tries to guess this whitening value to allow the exploit code to be injected into the hypervisor system um, call. And when it gets that right, you then end up with a hacked console. So of course we need to think about, is this a bad update hack actually a better option than one of our things like the RGH3 hack? Well, with the Xbox 360, the hope has always been to get a software-only mod that will work with all models, and also one that will then remove the need to do some quite fiddly soldering to the motherboard, along with the NAND reprogramming etc. that goes with the RGH3 style mods. Now, as, as, as Grim Doomer um, themselves states, um, that the bad update exploit does offer this software only solution, but it doesn't replace the hardware mods, and, and, and they see it as more of a proof that it can be done rather than a fully fledged solution in itself. Now, now the bad update mod is actually non persistent. So, so once you run the hack, it will allow you to do most of what you'd be able to do with an RGH3 exploit. But, but since it's using code injected into the runtime configuration of the console, as soon as you remove the power and reboot, the exploit of course is removed. Uh, and, and you then have to rerun the exploit every time you reboot the machine. Now, as this can take up to 20 minutes for the exact timing conditions to be met, uh, after you reboot, it is not as user friendly as the, as the hardware mods. Now, now, the good part of it, of course, is that it will run on all Xbox 360 models. So, now, not all of these can be hard modded, so if you've got a Winchester motherboard in your console, that then bad update really is your only option. So, again, 
A big, big shout out to Grim Doomer for this truly inspired piece of coding. I say, I, I do not know how, how he managed to do that. That is way beyond my capabilities. If you do want to give it a go, then, then please do. Now, I'm not planning on using it on my Xbox 360, so, so I'm not going to be doing a modding video myself. So, so please do have a look at Mr. Mario's installation video if you want to have full instructions on how to install the exploit. And again, I'll put links to that down in the description below. So I hope you find this video useful and informative. I must admit, I've definitely learned a lot more about the security of the Xbox 360 making it. If you have enjoyed this episode, then, then please do click that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more modding, gaming, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.